y'all. So this is the day. Ooh, no, hold on, y'all. Look, I'm recording all of this in one day, so it's still the same little thing of glass of wine. So y'all, disclaimer, I am a married woman. I do not, um, how, how, do, how should I put this? I do not co-sign cheating, infidelity on any part, but I love a good juicy story, y'all. So <laughs> here we go. So Kendra and Byron had a little kiss. Kendra confided into her good friend, Tiffany, and Tiffany was like, bump Lamont, go ahead and get you some. <laughs> Because Lamont and Kendra have not been having sex, you guys. And so, um, Kendra is like, I, I'm, I'm over it. But she's telling herself that she would never cheat on Lamont. That's what she's telling herself now. She also has found out in the previous episode that Lamont is back to gambling and Lamont is back to heavily drinking. Okay, both of them are living foul, basically, right? So, cut over to Lamont getting ready to go on another business trip but this time it's only a day trip okay it's only a day trip so um kendra is fixing dinner byron is supposed to come over and she is getting things ready she's looking in the mirror and she's telling herself i can't do this y'all i can't what am i thinking of i'm seven and a half months pregnant and i'm planning on trying to basically have sex with someone else i can't do this so she finds herself on and she's going to call it off she's like I, I can't do this let me go ahead and text text this man and that's when she hears a knock at the door at the door and she's like wait a minute i told him seven o'clock and it's six o'clock what is he this can't be right so she goes downstairs she looks through the blinds and it's his car and she opens up the door and it's byron y'all he showed up an hour early and so he's like, hey, I know you told me 7 o'clock, but I figured, you know what, I'll cook for you. Um, which is why I showed up early. And she's smiling and she's like, okay, then. He ends up cooking, y'all. He ends up cooking some pasta dish with salmon and some spinach and some um, sun-dried tomatoes and garlic bread. That sounds good. That's what I would want to eat right now. <laughs> so he cooks this meal and he has himself... Um, some wine okay while they're uh eating dinner and they're just catching up because again byron only works now one to two days out of out of the week instead of two to three or three to four days right they are eating and so when they're done eating kendra gets up to clear the table and byron byron was like let me handle that you know i'll i'll go ahead and, and put everything away and kendra's thinking to herself it is so nice to have someone who just does everything and you sit back and you know they say they have it so he gets up and he cleans the table and that's when Kendra you know she pours himself some more wine and she takes the wine into the living room when he's done doing the dishes he comes over and he sits on the couch next to her <clears throat> what the hell is that child this grown-ass man I'm sorry y'all I have a grown-ass man that lives across the street from me and he, he's a man child. He has all these toys. So literally a little toy car, m remote control car went by my window. Scaring the hell out of me, girl. So anyway, they're sitting on the couch. It's starting to rain again, y'all. It's it's um tornado season. It's, yeah, tornado season, flood season right now. You can see a flash flood warning coming up on the screen saying, you know, uh, please take precautions, so heavy, heavy rains to follow for the next three to four hours and so Lamont is like so Byron is like isn't that where Lamont is going she's like yeah but he should be there by now so he should be safe because Lamont had, le had left early in the day so wherever he's going he should be safe hopefully right oh child I'm getting hot <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. So anyway, y'all, so they're sitting on the couch. That's when Byron leans in a little closer. And that's when Byron picks up her hand and he starts kissing the inside of her hand. And um, Kendra looks at him and she smiles. And that's when they start to full on make out, right? Now let's cut over to Lamont, you guys. Lamont decided to stop by his aunt's house. What is her petty name? Aunt Ella. Y'all actually have an Aunt Ella. She she passed away years ago, but she wasn't petty. So Lamont decided to stop by Aunt Ella's house before he head out on his business trip, right? 
So he gets there and he's like, hey, auntie, what's what's going on? And Aunt Ella comes around the corner because, of course, she's been on the phone gossiping all, all uh, day with her church friends. And she's like, hey, baby, what's going on? You you getting ready to go go on the road again? He said, yeah, yeah, Aunt Ella. So what is this, what is this that you want to talk to me about? Aunt Ella has still been pressed hard, y'all, about this, this argument that Kendra and Lamont had had. Now, Kendra and Lamont had sort of squashed that, but not really. So they had moved on. They let it go, but not Miss Ella ass. So she said, well, baby, I want to see how you and Kendra go, are doing. You know, ever since that fight and, and since the baby shower, I haven't even seen Kendra. She thinks she's too good to come over here and speak to us country folks. Lamont rolled his eyes. He said, nah, Aunt Ella, that's not what it is. I mean, she's pregnant. She's at she's at home. She's trying to get things together for the nursery. And so Aunt Ella was like, well, I can help her with that. I can do that, you know. I can come over. You know, Glenn can sit there. He ain't much good or nothing anymore. But, child, she's talking about Glenn and Uncle Glenn is sitting at the table, too. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, Aunt Ella, you know, maybe she would like your help. But I think that if she really needed your help or wanted it, she would have asked. So that's when Aunt Ella eyebrows kind of raised. She said, well, I'll say then. She said, well, what about that old Byron guy? How y'all doing? You know, he's still working there. And so Lamont said, yeah, he's still working there, but, you know, I cut his hours down to one or two um, days out of the week. So, you know, just for us to have, you know, a little help until the baby comes. And so Aunt Ella was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, Aunt Ella. So he's like, is this all you wanted to talk to me about? You could have called me for this. She's like, well, no, no, that's not all I want to talk to you about. She said, well, you just tell Kendra that, you know, if she needs somebody to help her, that I, I can help her out. And so Lamont would have had enough of this. He's like, look, Aunt Ella, you know, Kendra's been through, through a lot. She's, you know, with the loss of our first baby, everything, she's a little bit more sensitive and cautious. And I just think she wants to do everything herself. So Aunt Ella looked at her. She's like, well, she ain't the only one that's lost a baby around here. And that's when Lamont looked at her. He's like, what are you talking about? She ain't the only one. Because to his knowledge, Aunt Ella ain't never had any kids. He's like, what are you talking about? She says, I'm just saying, she ain't the only one who's lost children around here. You know, this big time city girl. I think she's the only one who ain't gone through stuff. And so he's like, what are you talking about? Like, where is this coming from? That's when Uncle Glenn kind of shifted in his chair. He said, you might as well go on ahead and tell him, Ella. And so Aunt Ella said, well, go ahead and sit back down, Lamont. Something I, I've been meaning to tell you, baby. She said, well, Lamont, the truth is, is that your mama wasn't really your mama. And he said, what? No, baby, your mama wasn't your mama. Your mama was your aunt. He's like, well, who's my mama? And she looks to him and she said, Lamont. And that's when she grabs his hand. She said, baby, I'm your mama. And he looks at her like, what? All right, you guys, that's the end for this part.